start, bench, cut these three Penn State running backs in college. Can you tell me who Penn State football is playing this weekend? Sorry, what? Welcome back into the Penn State Pulse. I'm your host, Dylan Dawson. Penn State gets their first crack at one of the four new Big Ten members this Saturday as the UCLA Bruins come to town. This game will air at noon Eastern time on Fox. Um, that alone seems to be a slight edge for Penn State as UCLA's internal clock will still be on Pacific time. They are actually just now flying into State College as I'm recording this on Friday afternoon. The spread on this thing right now sits at PSU by 28 points, which I honestly think might be a little bit low. Um, let me tell you why I think Penn State covers. So there are a lot of things stacking up against UCLA, beginning with starting quarterback Ethan Garbers. Um, he hasn't really been practicing this week after suffering a head injury against Oregon last week. And if he can't go, it'll be sophomore Justin Martin who has thrown five total passes at the collegiate level. Um, UCLA head coach Deshaun Foster was asked about Garbers being in concussion protocol after taking a big hit to the head in the Oregon game as he came up holding the back of his head. And Foster responded with, quote, I would assume he was crying or sad about the situation. Um, definitely an interesting line there from the Bruins head man. So the passing game probably won't be there for UCLA. But the run game is definitely worse. Um, they rank second to last in the entire FBS right now in rush yards per game with only 57. Penn State's up around 250, I think. Um, and they'll be going up against a Penn State run defense that ranks seventh best in the FBS. UCLA, excuse me, UCLA has one rushing touchdown on the whole year and actually only three passing touchdowns as well. Um, th this, this is not a good team, guys. So things are not looking too pretty on the defensive side of the ball either as the Bruins are giving up about 31 points per game right now. Um, they also have not recorded a single sack in their last three games. Shout out to my guy Landon Tengwall for digging up that artifact of a stat. Um, UCLA is going into this thing with a 1-3 record and that one win was an absolute barn burner against Hawaii which went final by the score of 16 to 13. Um, let's jump into some UCLA players to watch. Even bad teams do have their standout players. Um, so I'm gonna name a few guys that you guys should keep an eye on on Saturday. Rico Flores Jr. That is UCLA's top pass catcher. The Notre Dame transfer has 12 catches for 187 yards and a touchdown so far this season. Uh, he's more of a big bodied possession receiver as he stands at 6'2", 205. Uh, he has great strength, great ball skills. So he'll be a guy to watch when they do attempt to pass the ball. Um, running back TJ Harden is probably their top playmaker overall, uh, in my opinion at least. He just doesn't get many opportunities behind a very subpar offensive line. Uh, he's carried 41 times for only 125 yards and a touchdown on the season. That is an abysmal three yards per carry. Um, again, I feel like that's more on the line. He hasn't had a lot of space to run. Uh, they do try and get him involved in the pass game as well, though. He has 13 catches so far this year for 88 yards. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball, uh, I'm gonna try my best to pronounce this name. Carson Schwessinger, I believe is how you say it. He is their linebacker and their top tackler. He has 34 already this year, uh, along with a forced fumble. Um, he's actually really turned it up in their last two games as he totaled 12 tackles against LSU and 13 against Oregon. So he is starting to hit his stride just in time for when that depleted defense really needs someone to step up. KJ Wallace, uh, that's their top guy in the defensive back room. He has totaled 18 tackles, four passes defense and a sack on the year. Wallace started his career at Notre Dame. Uh, and then he went to Georgia Tech for two years, and he is now in his sixth season total and first with UCLA. Um, it's about that time. Let's jump into some predictions to close this thing off. Uh, I said it last week, and it did not even come close to coming to fruition. So I'm going to take a shot at this one again. 
Drew Aller goes over 300 yards passing on the day. Um, this isn't just wish wishful thinking, though. UCLA's pass defense is abysmal. Uh, in their last three games combined, the Bruins have given up 937 yards and 10 touchdowns through the air. So a big day for Drew could and should be in the works on Saturday. Next, Penn State's defense finally broke out, statistically at least last weekend, as they put up seven sacks and 13 tackles for loss against Illinois. Um, I think they continue that dominance on Saturday and have their second game in a row with five plus sacks. And then finally, I'm sure many of you have seen the buzz this week surrounding Nick Singleton's absence from practice. Uh, I am led to believe that that's not something serious to worry about, but he is not at 100% right now. Um, I think Nick could play Saturday if they really needed him to, but Penn State may just sit him and let him rest or give him a pretty light workload at the very least. Um, so that opens up more carries for other backs and they'll still go with the running back by committee approach. So it wouldn't just be 30 carries for Katron and call it a day. Um, with Cam Wallace injured, this could be an opportunity for true freshman running back, Quentin Martin, to get a nice little 10 or 12 carries. Um, so I'm gonna say the Pittsburgh native gets his first career collegiate touchdown this weekend. Quentin Martin touchdown, book it. For the score prediction, I'm going with Penn State 41, UCLA seven. This is just not a very good team right now. Um, they're pretty banged up as well. So I think PSU dominates in the trenches and controls this game from start to finish. So that is going to do it for today's episode of the Penn State Pulse. Thank you guys as always so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend. Let's get another mark in that win column. And I will see y'all in a few days to break down what we saw.